Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be taking a look at a generic brand door or window sensor that is ultimately made by Hank Electronics, which after doing some research, appears to be a company located out of China. In this video, I will be doing an unboxing of the sensor as well as basic setup and going over what I plan on using the sensor for. The reason I picked this sensor was because it looked very similar to some Z-Wave sensors that I purchased from Monoprice, and I had a suspicion that they were probably made by the same manufacturer. After doing some digging around, it looks like the Monoprice sensors, as well as the sensor I purchased, along with a lot of other sensors that are being sold, are actually all made by the same manufacturer called Hank Electronics. The reason I picked them is because I haven't had any issues with my Z-Wave adapters from Monoprice, so I figured they would probably be around the same quality, if not better, than the ones that I've been using. For this use case, I'm actually looking at something that's a little portable. I do a lot of traveling for work, and because of that, I'm in a hotel quite often. So the main use case for the sensor is really just going to be on the hotel door. Um, I don't have housekeeping come through when I stay typically. I, I don't need someone to make my bed for me. I can do that myself. So I don't really see a need to have anyone come in and out of my room. You always hear some horror stories about sometimes people come into other people's rooms and go through their belongings or take things out of their safe. So I just would like to have peace of mind to know that no one's coming in and out of my room. And with the setup I'm looking at using, it doesn't it's not gonna take that much effort to attach it to a door just to give me a little extra peace of mind to know that no one's coming into my room that shouldn't be. So going on and opening the box, the sensor's just right on top, nice and neat. They really do look exactly the same as the other Z-Wave sensors that I've gotten from Monoprice. The same light and tamper sensor on the back. Inside the box, you're going to get some mounting 3M tape, as well as two AAA batteries, and the instruction booklet. I do like that the packaging is pretty straightforward and there isn't a lot of extra waste in there. It's nice that, while I know it's probably a cost savings thing for them, there isn't a lot of extra packaging that's not needed that's just a waste of resources, so I, I appreciate that. For this project, I don't plan on actually using any of the 3M mounting tape or screws. I'm going to be using some form of museum putty, so that way I can easily attach it to a door and then remove it when I'm done with it. The instruction manual actually seems pretty in-depth. It goes over initial setup and gives you instructions on how to install the app as well as set up the app and the sensor within the app. The sensor has two components, the sensor itself which is going to have all the electronics in it and also a magnet that tells the sensor if it's open or closed. To open the sensor you push the button on the top and pull back the backing and you can see there that there is the temp tamper sensor. What the tamper sensor does is when it's attached it closes the loop and then when it's pulled away, it's going to open and cause the sensor to trigger. I just wanted to real quickly show a comparison between the Z-Wave Plus sensor for Monoprice and this Wi-Fi sensor. As you can see, they're basically identical. The only major difference is, is going to be the backing on these as well as some of the icons on the magnet or the sides. They feel exactly the same. The magnets are the same weight. The units are basically the same, again, outside of the screw holes taking off the backs, you can see that they they are basically identical. Uh, even the batteries that they ship with are the same. So the really only the major difference is that on the Wi-Fi one, there's some extra plastic in the mounting holes, but that's about it. They, they pretty much are the same, and you would expect that since they really do come from the same manufacturer at the end of the day. For more information on the manufacturer, I will include a couple links that I use to determine that these are from the same manufacturer, such as FCC reports, and you can kind of trace it back to determine if you want to use these or not. I know there's always some kind of concern around devices coming from different places, but again, if you're buying the Monoprice sensors, these really are coming from the same manufacturer. And with that said, you can honestly just shop around for these, so if you have a specific use case, you could either look at the Monoprice ones, you can look at this model that I purchased. Um, looking on Amazon, it looked like there was a, a handful that looked pretty much the same. So you can really just kind of shop around and find whichever one's the cheapest, and I honestly believe you can probably use whichever apps are available. You would just have to tie it in. 
I'm going to do some testing later on to see if that's the case. I'll use the Monoprice Wi-Fi app to see if I can actually tie this Wi-Fi sensor into it. My, my guess is yes, unless they do something within the serial numbers, I guess, to kind of hard code them, but that just seems like a lot of overhead for these kinds of things. So you most likely can just use whatever application you want to use for them. Okay, so again, for this project, I will be using this sensor for travel. So I actually have a travel router that I take with me pretty much every trip I go on. It allows me to connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi and then have a more secured connection to it. So this is the one I usually take with me. It has a USB port for storage on it. It's USB powered and it actually has an ethernet jack on it. So if I'm in a hotel that provides ethernet and not have wireless, I'm able to use either or. And the way it works is it'll connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi and then provide a connection on a different radio for me to connect to. On this sensor, to open it, you're going to push the button on top and remove the backing. This will expose the battery compartment. Go ahead and put in the two AAA batteries and then close it up. When you put the batteries in for the first time, it's actually going to flash very quickly. This actually means it's in pairing mode, so if you haven't already, I would probably start downloading the app. In all honesty, you'd probably be better off getting the app installed and set up prior to putting the batteries in. Okay, so to set up the sensor, we're going to have to first install the app. To do that, go into your app store, and you're going to search for Smart Life based on the instructions that were given. As you can see, there's a lot of similar looking apps, which kind of goes back to my thought that this sensor, along with all the other ones, probably can be interchanged between whatever control app you want to use as long as there's a way to add in a Wi-Fi door sensor. I'm, I'm going to play around with that and see what I can find out, but most likely I'm going to say that you can probably use any one of these apps for it. So for this one, it's going to be Smart Life, Smart Living. You're going to go ahead and install the app. It might take a little while depending on your internet connection. It's not a large app, but it it's a decent size, so it could take a couple minutes, depending. While it's downloading, make sure to check out more information about the app itself. I always highly recommend checking out what kind of permissions an application may need. For this one, it's going to probably ask for camera, location, microphone, storage, and then a few other things. For apps, it's, it's always good to take a look at what they're going to ask for and make sure that what it's asking for makes sense and that you're comfortable with it. If you're using an app such as an art app or like a drawing app, there's no need for it to necessarily pull your location or be checking your email, for example. So you always wanna make sure when you're installing apps, especially ones that are lesser known, but even still, you, should, you really should check all apps when installing them, what kind of permissions they want and does it make sense for what it's supposed to be doing. Within Android, um, I believe depending on the type of permissions it wants, and I believe it's going to be all these primary ones like camera, location, microphone, and storage, it's going to ask on first attempt to use, and then you're either going to allow or disallow that access. So depending on how the app is built, it may still function fine, you may just lose some functionality, but some apps, depending on how they're built, may just not work at all until you allow that access. Looking at this one, it, everything kind of looks expectable for, for what this app would do in the grand scheme of things. It is going to control multiple different types of sensors along with some automation, so you might want to set in rules about leaving or entering a geofence so location kind of makes sense. Obviously, Wi-Fi is going to be needed to set up these Wi-Fi devices. Camera, eh, it, it really depends, but for the most part, everything kind of seems okay. Once the app's been finished installing, you can go ahead and open it. If it's your first time using it, you'll have to register. They give you a privacy policy. I always recommend reading them. They can be very lengthy, though, so it's not reasonable to always do it, but I do recommend it. You either are going to disagree and stop using it, or you're going to agree. For here, you'll have to use an email address, which will then send you a verification code. It's a little confusing because it kind of seems like it's asking for a phone number, but you don't have to do that. I would just do some form of an email address. Once submitted, you'll get an email with a verification code. You actually have to go into your email. And unfortunately for this app, you can't just copy paste it. You actually have to manually 
type it in. So for those of us that have difficulty remembering six numbers, it's kind of annoying. But once you put the verification code in, you can then set your password. Once the password's set, it looks like you can create a family. I don't think you actually have to, uh, but you can if you want. If you're really going to use the app, you're probably going to want to. And then it's time to add the device. To add a device, you can click on Add Device underneath the box. This will bring up all the different options for devices you can actually put in here. It does look like there's other things besides Wi-Fi, so I assume you would need some kind of hub to integrate with it. You're going to find the sensor, and you're going to click on it, at which point you're going to get some instructions. Uh, this kind of goes back to suggesting having the app installed prior to putting the batteries in. If you put the batteries in and it times out, you will have to go through a process of removing the batteries, waiting about 10 seconds, putting them back in and then holding the button on the inside for about five seconds to initiate pairing mode. So once it's in pairing mode, the sensor is detected almost immediately. Do note this sensor only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. Now this is asking for location. I don't necessarily understand why location is needed to detect nearby Wi-Fi networks. I believe that's how Google does it though, so I think that's okay. You can just deny it. It even says right here you can manually enter the Wi-Fi name, or if you enable the location permissions, then it'll detect it normally. I'm going to go ahead and deny it. I don't see why this app will need location permissions for me. I'm not doing anything with geofencing. Again, this is just a simple mobile sensor that I'm going to be using in hotels. So if you deny it, you're going to have to go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi network in manually. If you do accept it, yeah, I would assume you would get a list of available networks that's detected. So I'm going to go ahead and type the SSID and password in. Then once it's all typed in, I'm going to go ahead and click confirm. And now it's going to go through the process of having the phone connect to the sensor and share the wireless settings so that the sensor can connect to the network. For me, for this project, I'm using that little mobile hotspot bridge, so I'm, I actually put the wireless network in there, and it's actually already connected, so that was really quick. It's one of the quicker sensors, and now we can see in the app, under all devices, that the one sensor's in there. Clicking on the sensor from the app, I can see that the, the tamper alarm is triggered and it's opened. Looks like there's history, and it seems pretty responsive. It's a little delayed. I am on the same wireless network as the sensor, but that doesn't matter too much because the sensor is going to connect to the cloud or the internet. So anything that triggers a sensor is going to go out to the internet and then come back in over the internet to the phone. So even if they're on the same network, it's not going to matter. There's still going to be a little delay there. If you click on settings, it's actually going to go ahead and give you your notification options. For this, you have closed, opened, tamper, and low battery. You can click on history, which will show you the history for the sensor. Which as you can see, I've kind of been messing around with to see how it reacts. So for this project, like I said, I'm going to be attaching it to hotel doors. So I will be bringing along some scotch removable mounting putty. This is also known as museum putty. I've used a couple different versions of it throughout my home for different projects mostly for attaching sensors, and I haven't had any issues with any of them. They honestly work really well. Even in my garage where I have a door sensor attached in below zero degree temperatures, it has not fallen off once. So it's it's actually a really good product, and I have not had any damage to anything the putty's been on, which is a big plus. A lot of times these sensors come with 3M tape, which is great, and stays forever, but if you ever want to remo remove it or move the sensor somewhere else, you're, you're going to damage whatever you're attached to, or you're going to get a lot of sticky residue on your sensors, which is just annoying to deal with. I, I find the putty the, the best solution to, to mounting the sensors. That's it for this video. I would love to know what kind of exciting home automation projects you have planned for this year in the comments below. It would also be great to hear about any smart home projects you've done or would like to see done on this channel. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps the channel out a lot. And make sure to get subscribed to the channel for more great tech content that will be coming out really soon. Thank you for watching.